I was four. My mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was diagnosed with breast cancer on December 23rd. Doctor ordered a PSA screening and it found out that I had prostate cancer. High school, sophomore year, I met a young lady and my very first girlfriend, she turned out to be. Uh, she was currently going through treatment. Uh, I knew she was wearing a wig. She didn't know I knew she was wearing a wig. Uh, the day after my father's 50th birthday, uh, July 14th, she passed away. That was an experience that will affect me for the rest of my life, and it has in, in, in the role that I play within the American Cancer Society. My mother passed um, in February of my freshman year in high school. I was 14. I am a cancer survivor of three years. And I'm a four-year prostate cancer survivor. You know, when you wake up one morning and all of a sudden you have no eyelashes, no eyebrows, and there's no definition to your face. I think that it is a blessing for me to have found Look Good, Feel Better because I'm able to go into these classes and facilitate to these women that are at various stages of their cancer treatment and be able to make them feel good and make them feel beautiful. There's approximately 15 facilities in the Kansas City area and there's somewhere between 10 and 12 ladies who attend each one. Each um, individual that comes the first time, they get a kit of product. There is just as much of a need for these warm, fuzzy, feel-good programs as there is for the scientific research. Because without that component, if people are going in with a defeated attitude, who's gonna beat it, you know? We started a group, Prostate Cancer Networking Group, and we are a survivor-led group, and we're out there to help support other guys that are having to go through it. Prostate cancer in guys is is a tricky thing. We have guys that haven't told their moms. They haven't told their kids. They hide this. It's like it doesn't exist if you don't acknowledge it. The American Cancer Society is, is a fabulous organization. They help us in all sorts of ways, whether it be distributing information, whether it be hooking up guys coming our way, getting us involved with inspiring programs. Our programs and services are made possible by the generosity of the people of our community. Hope Lodge is just, it's an inspiring place. Not everyone lives near a cancer center that can treat what they have. My mom was diagnosed with leukemia a year ago and had a bone marrow transplant, and I can't even imagine if she had to go somewhere and stay in a hotel, because she couldn't, because of their immune system. They have no immune system. And the Hope Lodge is just an amazing place that people can stay. The Road to Recovery program is, is one of the services that we offer, again, utilizing the, 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 the use of volunteers who uh, are trained, background checked, have insurance checks, uh, and then they agree to, uh, if there is a patient that is needing a ride, uh, that is coordinated by a volunteer coordinator who communicates with that volunteer driver, uh, and, and that ride is set up from their home to treatment and then back. Cancer has no, no rules. It'll affect anyone, rich, poor, black, white, young, old, it doesn't care. And, and that same mentality has to go with everyone in the community coming together to help beat it. Kansas City is a dynamic town. There is a cohesiveness to this city. There is a true knowledge of need. People know that there are people that are suffering. And when it comes to cancer, it affects everybody. And I think that's very well understood. Having the American Cancer Society here as an avenue to turn to for donations, for services, for the programs, that's why we're here.